Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. But does Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia, make sense to you? Or are you a little like uh, those first followers of Jesus on that first Easter morning, hearing the testimony of the women and thinking the story nonsense? We have come to church today, haven't we, with the expectation that the tomb is empty and to celebrate that Jesus has been raised from the dead. But early on that first Easter morning, Jesus' friends had no such expectation. The women went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, the dead body of Jesus. They weren't expecting anything else. They didn't go to the tomb thinking to themselves, well, we've got the spices just in case he is still dead, but let's hope that he is alive again. <laughs> they knew very well that when you're dead, you're dead. Full stop. And the disciples they too weren't expecting anything unusual. They were hiding, terrified after all that had happened. Their reality was one of fear and dread at what lay ahead for them now, now that their leader, the one who seemed to promise so much to them and for them, was gone. They weren't expecting anything different. We know that um, Luke's gospel is written some decades after the event. But what's striking, isn't it, is that it is the women who were first to the tomb. In the ancient world, women were not regarded as credible witnesses. And yet, Luke has them here receiving this most important message. And then he also has Jesus' closest, closest of friends, disbelieving the testimony of the women, disbelieving it. So much so that they say, it's nonsense. Idle and silly talk is the meaning of the Greek word used there, leiros, one that can be used to describe the babbling of a fevered and insane mind. It doesn't sound very promising, does it, when you think about it? And if you were to set down a, a record of something, you would want to make sure that it was as watertight as possible. Reliable witnesses, instant belief. But that's not what Luke does. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, firstly and foremost, is a story of faith and belief, which we must all give a response to. And in Luke's account, the one that Lionel read to us just a moment or two ago, we can find three ways in which to respond to the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Firstly, there's the response of the women. They believed and they shared the good news. To the announcement, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. They were reminded of Jesus' own words. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. The evidence of what he had said all along was right before their eyes, and they believed. Are you a believer this morning? Are you a believer in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? 
Do you confess Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead? If you do, you stand in a long, long line of countless numbers of worshippers who have proclaimed the good news and who have shared it with others down through the centuries. The gospel message is that Jesus died, but God raised him from the dead. He is alive forevermore, and that is the good news. And good news is for sharing. Yes. Yes. The second response to the news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is that of the eleven and the others. And we read, they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Now we know that eventually they did come to believe but it's their initial response, which is one of unbelief, to dismiss it because it's too far-fetched, too fanciful. Is that where you are today in your response to this account? Many people don't believe the story of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the resurrection. They find it too strange. It's, it's too unusual. And yes, people say it is nonsense. People want incontrovertible evidence, hard facts, proof beyond any reasonable doubt. But even then, some people still don't believe because the resurrection is about faith and belief. And it calls for a response from you. And then there's the third response, that of Peter. When we read, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Peter's response is to go and check it out for himself. And maybe that is what God is calling you to do this morning. Maybe that's what has brought you to church this morning. Peter went back to the tomb, the place of the dead, as we are told, wondering, which carries with it a sense of beginning to speculate on a, ma on a matter, beginning to think about things, beginning to formulate your own opinions about it, beginning to explore it for yourself. And to look at it. Now you might sit there and say to me, well, it's easier for Peter. Uh, Peter could run to the tomb. He could check it out for himself. He could see the evidence before his eyes. I can't do that. And that is true. We can't. But what we can do is check out the gospel story for ourselves and read it, and ponder it, and think upon it. I wonder if you're familiar with the story of a man called Frank Morrison. Frank Morrison was the pseudonym for a man called Albert Henry Moss, who was an advertising uh, agent and a journalist who set about to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the resurrection of Jesus Christ never happened. Although he admired Jesus as a person, he was a skeptic uh, who considered the stories of Jesus nothing more than myths and legends, none more so than the story of the resurrection. Convinced that it wasn't true, and to prove his argument, he set about using the skills he had as a journalist to research the details for himself, to prove that Jesus never rose from the dead, and then to write a book, presenting his findings to the world to dispel 
to dispel the, the myths. But something unexpected happened. Because when he began to dig in to the details of the story of the resurrection, as he began to look at the evidence from the Gospels, from other sources as well, he found that the account of the resurrection was compelling. That Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. That the story is true. And so much so that it caused him to put his trust and his faith in Jesus Christ. He moved from unbelief to belief, faith. He responded to the gospel call. And he did write up his research and published a book, this book, called Who Moved the Stone? which has become something of a Christian classic, presenting the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first chapter of the book is entitled, The Book That Refused to Be Written. And in the preface, Morrison explains how it came into being. He says, this study is in some ways so unusual and provocative that the writer thinks it desirable to state here very briefly how the book came to take its present form. In one sense, he says, it could have taken no other, for it is essentially a confession. The inner story of a man who originally set out to write one kind of book and found himself compelled by the sheer force of circumstances to write quite another. He said it wasn't the facts themselves that altered, because those are set down, they are historical. But it was the interpretation to be put on these facts that underwent a change in his heart and in his mind. And he says, somehow I shifted from one state of unbelief to faith and belief. And he concludes, the book as it was originally planned was left high and dry, like those Thames barges when the great river goes out to meet the incoming sea. The writer discovered one day that not only could he no longer write the book as he had once conceived it, but that he would not if he could. Morrison speaks of a confession, our saying of words that we believe. And in the ancient creeds and confessions of the church, we read the words, sometimes we say the words that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, and on the third day rose again from the dead. That's the good news that we celebrate today, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we have an opportunity to respond, to respond in faith, just like the women to confirm the faith that lives deep within us. Or like that of the apostles and Peter and many others down through the ages who have moved from unbelief to belief as the story has become real to them in their lives. The story of God's incredible gift of love in the person of Jesus Christ for you and for me. My prayer today is that you will take this opportunity to believe in your heart and to confess with your lips the great acclamation today that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. Amen.